Hello friends, this video on metals and non-metals part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we are going to talk about the physical properties of metals. Now when I say physical properties, I am talking about the properties which are externally visible. So the first property of metals that we are going to talk about is the metallic luster. So what do we mean by luster? So we say that metals in their pure state have a luster. When I say luster, it means a shining surface. So if you look at metals in their pure form, so please remember this. So when they are not mixed with anything else, so in their pure form, they will always have a shiny surface. And this is a property which is exclusively present for metals. Now, if you want, you can just try this out yourself. So what you have to do is you take small pieces of iron, copper, aluminium or magnesium. So these kind of metals you take and just look at the appearance of their surface. Now what you do, clean the surface of each of these samples by rubbing with a sandpaper. You know what is sandpaper? So sandpaper generally, if you go to any shop and ask for sandpaper, they'll give it to you. It will be a paper with a rough surface and it is used for cleaning the metal surfaces. So once you clean it and now you again observe the appearance on the surface and you will see that the surface is very very shiny. So in fact for gold and silver you can actually see I mean we actually know how shiny it is the gold jewelry silver jewelry however they are mixed with some other things also in order to provide rigidity to it but still these metals have a lot of luster in them so metallic luster is a property or a physical property of metals next is hardness now metals generally are hard However, the hardness might vary from one metal to another. So one metal might be more hard, some other metal might be quite soft. But as such, metals when compared to non-metals, they are hard. So let us take some examples. Now you will observe that there are metals like sodium. So if you consider metal like sodium, you will see that they are comparatively soft when compared to other metals like iron, copper, aluminium, magnesium. So if you look at these metals, they are hard compared to sodium, which is which is kind of soft. So what kind of activity you can do? Maybe you can take one of these metals and you just try to break the metal with the help of a knife. And what do you see? You will see that you are not able to do it because the metal is quite hard. But if you try the same experiment with a piece of sodium, in that case, you will see that the, the, so you will be able to cut the piece of sodium, which shows that sodium is comparatively softer when compared to iron, copper, aluminium, magnesium, gold or silver. So in general, metals are hard. Now, whatever physical properties we are going to talk about now, that doesn't mean that all metals are going to have the same property. There are exceptions to it. There are variations even within the metal. For example, as far as hardness is considered, not all metals are equally hard. For example, even if you compare iron or copper or magnesium, they are not equally hard. Some, some of them is harder than the other. So the hardness varies from one metal to another. Similarly, there might be certain exceptions where the metals are not hard. They are like kind of soft, for example, sodium. So that and that is the reason why metals are substances are not classified as metals and non-metals based on their physical properties because there are too many exceptions to it. There are a lot of variations in it. Therefore, the definition of metal and non-metal is somebody who has a tendency to lose electron will be classified as metals. The next property is malleability. So what is malleability? Now this is the property by which metals can be beaten into thin sheets. Now what do we mean by that? What do we mean by thin sheets? Now have you ever used aluminium foil for wrapping your food? Like when you pack your lunch box, have you seen that a thin foil is used for wrapping up the food? So what is that foil made up of? The foil is made up of aluminium. In fact, you would have seen these kind of boxes also. 
So how do you get such thin sheets out of uh, a hard metal like aluminium? So that shows that aluminium has a property that it can actually be beaten into thin sheets. Now how do you beat it? Now just take a small example. Take a hammer and take uh, any metal object, maybe uh, an iron nail or a, a small piece of aluminium if you have any in your house and you start beating it with the hammer. Now when you repeatedly beat it with the hammer, what do you see? So what do you would see? What, uh, what you would most likely see is the metal changes its shape. Now as you beat it wherever, it, it tends to become deformed in that portion. So basically on beating metals, they are able to change their shape. So when you vigorously beat it, it might even turn into thin sheets and that is how it happens in case of aluminium. Now not only aluminium foil, so aluminium foil is just one example. So aluminium foil is one example which shows the property of malleability. Another example could be the silver foil which is used for decorating sweets. If you go to a sweet shop, you see a lot of sweets have a thin silver foil over it. So that silver foil is also obtained from silver. So the silver metal is actually beaten into extremely thin sheets and that's how we get it. So this shows that and this property is present again exclusively in metals so if you try to compare I and mean, if you try to look at a similar property in case of non-metals you will see that they do not have this property now when we talk about non-metals we will talk about each of these properties again and show that how they do not have it so this property of malleability can be seen in a lot of metals like aluminium silver iron zinc copper etc However, gold and silver are the most malleable metal, metals and needless to say that is why because of this much of flexibility they are used to design so many jewelry of different shapes and designs right. So if you look at gold necklace or a bangle so they all have different designs and they are all made up of gold. So that had been possible because gold can be manipulated into different type of shapes. So gold and silver are most malleable metals. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.